The headlines. 18 bandits killed, guns recovered in raid by security operatives in Wasi, local government area of Plateau State. Police arrest eight over killing of university lecturer in Maiduguri. KB State government constitutes panel to probe recent warehouse looting. On the foreign scene, from prisoner to president in 20 days, Senegal's Diomaye Faye takes oath of office. Hello there, good evening and welcome to the Trust, Trust TV News Update. My name is Abdullahi Abed. We begin in Plateau State where on Monday a joint operation conducted by the Department of State Services, the police and vigilante groups resulted in the deaths of at least 18 bandits in Zurak Company of Wasi, local government area of Plateau State. Additionally, several guns were recovered during the raid. Reports indicate that the bandits, along with their informants, as well as some traditional rulers perceived to have betrayed the community, were killed during the operation. This incident comes just two weeks after bandits attacked a market in the same area, resulting in the deaths of seven people. Shapi Sambo, a young leader in Wasi, confirmed the incident, stating that the criminals were, were targeted in a combined operation involving the DSS, the police, and vigilantes. The bandits were attacked while holding a meeting at their hideout. Abdullahi Usman, another youth leader in Wasi, corroborated the incident, mentioning that the bandits were targeting were targeted following the recent attack on the market in the area. As of press time, the spokesperson of the State Police Command, DSP Alabo Alfred, is yet to respond to inquiries regarding the recent incident. On Tuesday, a group of enraged Jews set ablaze the house of a farmer within the Angwa Rukuba Eto Baba community in Jos of area of Plateau State. And reports indicate that the youth also raided the farmer's poultry farm, looting his birds before setting the farm ablaze. A resident of the community confirmed this development to newsmen, stating that the youth's actions were prompted by the alleged killing of a security guard in the farm, said to be employed by the owner of the farm. According to the eyewitness, the farmer's son, suspecting the security guard of theft, purportedly caught him in the act and commenced an assault on the guard. Unfortunately, during the altercation, the security guard collapsed and died. The deceased security guard's body has been evacuated to a hospital. In response to the situation, personnel from the state's fire service have been dispatched to contain the blaze and prevent it from further spreading to neighboring areas. Additionally, security operatives have been deployed to maintain order and prevent further escalation of violence in the community. Well, let's cross over to Joss, the Plateau State Capital, where our Trust TV correspondent, Ado Musa, is standing by to give us update on this and, of course, the security operation that led to the killing of uh, those bandits in Wase. Ado, thank you so much for joining us uh, at this hour. What more have we learned about this coordinated operation by the DSS, the police, and those vigilante groups? Uh, what have you learned so far? Uh, well, uh, according to the... Uh, members of this community that uh, normalcy has been restored, uh, only that uh, there is still tension and fear in the people because uh, some will be thinking that uh, probably those who have uh, fled uh, to the bush may one day recuperate and then return and then possibly to attack the community. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, according to uh, the members of the community, everything has been restored. But that fear is still in many of the residents of the uh, community because of the fear of the unknown. Uh, some of them were telling me that uh, it is possible that uh, uh, these people may regroup and then uh, return to the community, while some were saying that uh, there is every possibility that even if they will return, they will not uh, come back now mm. because of uh, what has happened to them. What about the radio silence from the police? Um, are they scheduled to make uh, uh, an announcement or public statement regarding this particular operation, especially given the scale of uh, the individuals involved, especially looking at the number? 
Yeah, well, uh, up to this moment, the security uh, agencies are yet to respond to my inquiry because I try all I could to address the action of the police, particularly the police. Uh, he's yet to respond to my call and uh, excellent sent to him. But uh, the president of the community uh, confirmed to me that uh, both the police and the DSS operatives were part of the operation because this is something that has been uh, tracking down for over two weeks and uh, locally or not for them, they were able to uh, uh, achieve what they wanted to achieve. Mm. Uh, clearly, a lot of intelligence work went into this one. But also, sticking to developments in that community, we understand that a traditional leader of the community was also one of those that was uh, gunned down in that operation. Yeah. Is there a confirmation yeah. about the identity of all the 18 uh, individuals involved uh, in this, um, or rather, that were identified as terrorists in this operation? Yes, uh, the regional committee uh, told me that uh, after the uh, vigilantes, as well as other security operatives, uh, were able to uh, uh, kill uh, the bandits, and they were able to also arrest some of them, whom later uh, were interrogated and then identify some informants. That is according to uh, the resident of the community. So they identify some informants who usually work for them, and it was after them, the vigilantes now identify them and then kill them. And according to some of them, that the, the, the traditional rulers, that is two traditional rulers, got involved because there was uh, an intelligence report which indicated that uh, a, a certain amount of money was sent to them uh, that is seeking their permission by the, 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 the bandits to come back to the community and live Peacefully. This is just according to some of the uh, youth in the area. That why these traditional rulers were killed was because they collected the money, which they felt that uh, they had betrayed them. Because they felt that if these people will now send money to them, seeking for their permission to return to the community and live peacefully, they shouldn't have agreed not to talk of even collecting the money. So at the end of the day, whoever was found collecting or must have collected the money that became also a victim. That was why the number of those that were killed uh, became 18. So these 18 included the, the, the traditional, the two traditional rulers and some of the informants that we are found uh, wanting uh, in the whole thing. All right, uh, still early hours uh, apparently. Much of what we know so far unconfirmed awaiting the police and DSS uh, releasing some sort of uh, statement about this particular operation. Adu Musa, thank you very much for the update. Uh, we'll hope to circle back as soon as we learn more. Thank you for having me. All right, Adu Musa, they are giving us an update on the recent operations by the DSS, the police and vigilantes uh, in uh, Plateau State in Wase, to be precise, regarding that Operation 18 uh, bandits and informants have been gunned down in that uh, joint operation. Moving on to Casino State, where 13 children who were abducted by bandits at Kase Village in Bazari local government area of Casino State have been freed. The Police Public Relations Officer of Casino State Police Command, ASP Abu Bakr Sadiq, confirmed this development to newsmen on Tuesday. He stated that the children's release came as a result of concerted efforts by the police command in collaboration with relevant stakeholders. The bandits had abducted the children, mostly girls, on Monday while they were fetching firewood in the bush. The successful release of the abducted children marks a positive development in the ongoing efforts to combat banditry and ensure the safety and security of residents across Katina State. Worshippers at a mosque in Gusau, the Zamfara state capital, fled on Tuesday when bandits raided nearby residents. The attack occurred during the observation of the congressional prayer Tahajjud during the month of Ramadan, which is a special prayer observed by Muslims in the last 10 days of the holy month. Reports indicate that the bandits first broke into a businessman's house where they killed him and abducted his wife and a neighbor. The deceased, identified as Jafar Nagoma, was reportedly shot for refusing to go with the attackers. He sustained gunshot wounds to the stomach and was rushed to King Fahad Hospital where he later succumbed to his injuries. According to an eyewitness, 
At another house, the bandits attempted to kidnap a couple, but the husband pleaded with them to spare his pregnant wife. And the commission of police in the Zamfara state, CP Shehu Muhammad, confirmed the killing of the businessman and the abduction of two other individuals, but denied that there was an attack on the mosque. Now, the incident underscores the undergoing on the current uh, security challenges faced by residents across Zamfara state and highlights the brazenness of the bandits' attacks across the state. A little earlier, we spoke to Trust TV's, uh, we spoke to Daily Trust regional editor in the Northwest, Yushio Adamu, who gave us an update on the recent attack in Zamfara. Yeah, uh, we have reported two days or, or also ago that uh, a terrorist leader was killed, uh, but unfortunately, on the wake of, of uh, Tuesday, bandits invaded a community in Gusau, the state capital, abducting a businessman, killing a businessman, and abducted two others. Uh, initially, people thought it was a mosque that was attacked because in these ten, last 10 days of Ramadan, people, Muslim, used to observe uh, a congregational prayer called Tahajjud. Uh, but what actually happened in the mosque was not attacked, but the bandits went straight to the uh, man's uh, residence to abduct him. Uh, he resisted and uh, they shot him in the stomach and abducted his wife. He was left uh, screaming for help. Uh, later, one of the bandits was said to have returned to the house and uh, hit him in the head with a stick uh, and he left him uh, unconscious. Uh, after they left, they went to the next house trying to also abduct couples. The husband pleaded with them that they should spare the wife because of her health uh, or pregnant uh, condition. And uh, they agreed, they left her and they went with him. Uh, it was while they were moving out of the community that uh, members of the vigilante could try to spoil or to spoil the uh, main operation. Then the bandits started shooting indiscriminately. And that what makes the people to run away from the, to abandon the prayer and run away. Hmm. And uh, what makes the people also believe that maybe the mosque was an uh, attack. But in the actual sense, since it was not an attack on the mosque. Hmm. A lot seems to be happening in Azamfara, I mean, considering this insecurity. And of course, the army has pushed to say that they've been making efforts. But still, these things keep reoccurring. What do you think is happening in Zamfara State uh, at the moment, uh, you yeah. know, pertaining security measures? I think uh, it's obvious and uh, we can understand the situation. By the time the military uh, continue to launch uh, operations or to raid the enclaves on the bandits, they would have flee the area or change their tactics to another area or to another place. Uh, if we can understand, the operation that recently took place was around 5 uh, axis. Uh, but the bandits now come back to the state capital. You know, so this is tell you that they are moving from uh, one place to another. If the military continue to raid their enclaves, they will move to another area. That's what exactly uh, happening. Hmm. So how are the residents, you know, affected by this unending phenomenon coping? It was a terrible uh, experience uh, because to to for the bandits to come to the state capital and uh, launch attack or abduct some people. That is uh, a terrible uh, situation. The residents were shocked and uh, everybody is uh, confused. Yushu Adamu, regional editor of the Daily Trust newspaper, given an update on the recent attack in Gusau that claimed the life of a businessman, speaking earlier to Sumaya Obaka. Still talking security, the Volunteer Police Command has reported the arrest of eight suspects linked to the murder of a lecturer from the Department of Physical Health Education at the University of Maiduguri, according to ASP Daso Kenneth. The spokesperson of the police command, the suspects were apprehended following a report filed by the chief security officer of the university. He assured members of the public, especially those within the and outside the university community, 
to remain calm as the police are committed to bringing the culprits to justice. The university spokesperson Anjuma Gambo revealed that the deceased, Dr. Abdul Qadir, was in his office attending to some pending official work on Sunday when the assailants attacked and killed him. A lecturer from the faculty added that the deceased had taken advantage of the Easter holiday to tidy up some official work on his desk when the attackers ambushed and murdered him. Now, the assailants, armed with a knife and axe, inflicted fatal injuries on the deceased and fled the scene with his car and other valuables. The tragic incident has shocked the university community and the arrest made by the police provide some hope and justice for justice to be served. The Cape State Government has established a 13-man committee to investigate the looting of palliatives in some parts of Birnin Kepi, the state capital, on Saturday. Residents had attacked a government warehouse in Bayankara area of Birnin Kepi, cutting away food items despite the presence of security operatives stationed at the warehouse. Additionally, they also broke into some private warehouses and shops in the area, stealing food items and looting a broken-down truck loaded with assorted grains meant for distribution in Birning Kebbi. Addressing journalists after the State Executive Council meeting on Monday, the Commissioner for Agriculture, Shehu Azu, who chairs the committee, stated that the panel had been tasked with submitting its report to the state government by Friday. Mazu clarified that not all government warehouses were targeted, but specifically those in Burning Kebbi local government area. He attributed the looting to mishandling during the distribution process, noting that those responsible failed to notify security agents about the distribution process. This is the news update on Trust TV. Still to come. Raising awareness on mental health in a daring and unusual manner. More on this and many other stories coming up ahead in just a moment. Welcome back to the news. Let's take another look at our top stories. 18 bandits have been killed and guns recovered in a raid by security operatives in Wasi, local government area of Plateau State. The police have arrested eight over the killing of university lecturer in Maiduguri, Borno State. Now, over the past few weeks, the Central Bank of Nigeria has bolstered the dollar supply to the foreign exchange market by $2.5 billion. Consequently, the Naira has appreciated against the United States dollar, marking the most significant gains witnessed in both the official and parallel market. In this report, Noel Sampson examines with an economy, engages rather with an economist to examine and explore the sustainability of these gains and of course an engagement with a BDC operator regarding the adjustments necessitated by the CBN's new Forex policy. His report. According to official data, the Naira rallied in March to 1,255 Naira to $1 on the final trading day, a notable increase from 1,595 Naira to $1 recorded at the close of February 2024. This 21.8 percent surge underscores the efficacy of various forex policies, strategies and interventions implemented by the Central Bank of Nigeria to stabilize and fortify the national currency. Against this backdrop, strategies for sustaining these gains in both short and long term were emphasized. CBN should make sure you cut off these speculators by ending this era of of forest racketeering, preferential allotment of forest to those who have no business needing dollar. Supply, a deliberate supply to individuals who actually need it for one raw material or the other, manufacturers, uh, industrial, small and scale businesses who need one raw material to finish their product. So these are the short, long and medium term measures to sustain this very trend or trajectory we have witnessed in the market in the last recent weeks. But the major uh, solution is encouragement of the uh, uh, other sectors like agriculture and uh, boosting the small scale industries and encourage them. BDC operators have been implicated in the surge of the dollar and with the introduction of the CBN's new forex policies, the focus now shifts to the adaptation to these regulations. 
Well, it is not new to us because uh, we have been attending series of training. Even last week, we attended one here organized by the CBN in Abuja. It's not really new to us. It's all about compliance and compliance and compliance. So it's not a new thing. And uh, we are happy about it. And uh, we continue to comply and uh, adjust. When we buy from the CBN, we sell to uh, customers that uh, we utilize the currency to PTA customers, that is a personal travel allowance or the BTA business travel allowance and uh, school fees, medical fees and other subscription like mortgage. Those are the permissible transactions that we are allowed to carry out. The depreciation of Nera has significant repercussions on businesses including heightened inflation rates and diminished purchasing power among citizens as witnessed by the current economic downturn. No, Samson, Trust TV News, Abuja. Now to developments on the international scene. Senegal inaugurated Basiru Diomani Faye as its new president on Tuesday, completing the previous little-known opposition figure's dramatic ascent from prison to palace in recent weeks. Faye was released from prison less than two weeks before the March 24th election, along with popular opposition figure and mentor Usman Sanko, following a political amnesty announced by outgoing President Marquis Sall. Faye, 44, campaigned on promises to clean up corruption and better manage the country's natural resources. His victory was seen as reflecting the will of young people frustrated with widespread unemployment and former colonial ruler France, seen by critics, be using its relationship with Senegal to enrich itself. Such frustrations are common among, across many countries in Africa, home to the world's youngest population, where a number of leaders have clung to power for decades. In his first speech as president-elect, Faye promised to fight corruption and reform the economy. Ahead of the elections, he released, he released a declaration of his assets to show transparency and called on other candidates to do the same. It listed a home in Dakar and land outside the capital and in his hometown. His bank accounts total roughly around $6,600. A new beginning for Senegal. Now, a Nigerian swing coach, Akin Rodoe Dare, who swam the entire 11.8 kilometers of the third mainland bridge in Lagos on Saturday, March 30th, has described his swimming expedition as a campaign against suicidal attempt, attempts. Here's the report. In a bid to raise awareness about mental health issues, particularly suicide and depression, a Nigerian swimming coach, Akero Doye Dari, engaged in a 11.8 kilometer swimming expedition. Daria fondly called Coach Dire stoned many as he plunged into the water from the beginning of the lagoon in Owaroshoki and ended at the Adeniji Adele bus stop, spanning two hours and 33 minutes, eliciting public admiration. We actually think of being suicidal is um, a good percentage of it after we've uh, gathered data so far actually happens at the Todd Milan Bridge where they just come down in and <laughs> just jump inside the water and then that's all. But, uh, one of the things I want us to point out is um, for the community, we all need to be able to listen very well because these people who actually uh, commit suicide one way or the other, they tend to have their way of communicating. So uh, the public needs to listen very well and make sure that they're able to do something around it. And then if it's for those who are actually thinking about it too, you're asking me to break the silence, just come outside and voice out. Depression is part of mental illness. Suicide, contemplating suicide is part of mental illness. So the fact that mental illness is an occurrence all over the place, due to whatsoever reason, we are preaching against it. To support him and to encourage him and to send a strong message out to all other youths that um, impossible is nothing. Put your mind to it. Let us know what you're doing. And as a government, we will always try and see how we can support you. The swimmer stressed the need to break the silence of people thinking of committing suicide. Well, quite a commendable feat there to draw attention to an ever-present societal uh, phenomenon. That's it on the news update for now. Feel free to follow us as usual across our social media platforms to catch up with more content and 
documentaries. My name is Abdullahi Ahmed. As always, thank you for your time. We'll see you soon.